good morning friends i welcome you all in this session of project management for manager subject the topic which we are discussing in today's session is uh, hr issues in project management whenever you handle a project as i said uh, you will have a project team and in project team you will have different team members and team members will have different qualifications Uh, you will have different cultures you will have different traditions different habits and so on right so it is very difficult to manage a team in in simpler words i can say it is very difficult to manage a project because you are not only dealing with project team but other stakeholders as well and each stakeholder has got uh, his or her own objectives own goals from that project so let us look at couple of issues related to conflicts team building and in and negotiation in project management so in previous class we have seen how to build a project team so i'll quickly go through this slide so first of all for making a project team you should identify what activities are to be performed in a project what are the skills needed to perform a particular activity in a project after that you just uh, try to find out a person who can do those activities so identify necessary skills uh, based on requirements of the activity if you don't get people uh, from within the organization then you should try to get it from outside the organization right so if you are in process of building team from within the organization then talk to different functional managers and try to get resource persons from those functional managers if you are successful then assemble assemble the team otherwise renegotiate with top management you can always approach top management that i am not getting this particular person from this particular functional department right so if you get success then again assemble the team otherwise build fall back positions when i say build fall back position means you can have different options now now you should always look for partial assistant assistance from functional managers now this uh, partial partial assistance can be in terms of let's say Uh, during weekends you are getting that particular person or every day one hour in the evening you are getting that particular person and so on right so this is known as foot in the door approach wherein you 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 would be going for partial assistance first and then you are asking for more and more uh, time from that particular person for your project report to top management if this is not possible foot in the doors approach is not possible you can reapproach top management and it is possible that top management may ask functional managers to spare a particular resource of on that department for your project if that also is not possible then you have got only one option left you need to adjust your budget you get a person from outside change schedule of the project you can delay couple of activities of the project because you don't have necessary resource available uh, to fulfill that particular activity you will have to change priority sometimes so rather than uh, doing an activity first you can uh, do it later on right so priorities can be changed to get the right person for a particular activity once you are done with assembly of assembling of the team then you need to develop that team and you need to uh, come up with clarity of roles and responsibilities in the team member so this is how you build the project team now there are several characteristics which a project team should have let us look at couple of 
important characteristics because if you don't have a right team you can't deliver product project in time right so first of all the team member should have clear sense of mission what is their mission what they want to achieve from from that particular team so everyone should have clear understanding of the objectives of the project and it is the responsibility of the team leader or project leader to ensure that each one in the team knows what are the objectives of the project the second point is productive interdependency this is quite important so as i said in a team you have got uh, team members from let's say finance from marketing from hr from production from r and d uh, let's say from maintenance and so on so each one of them have got their own languages when i say own languages means uh, they use their own uh, terminologies for example a finance uh, uh, person will always talk in terms of return on investment npv irr uh, sources of funding interest rates and so on right while the marketing fellow he will always talk about uh, you know um, brand management he will talk about segmentation targeting positioning pricing advertising isn't it while on the other hand if if uh, if there is a manufacturing guy in the team he will always talk about aggregate production planning um, maintenance scheduling sequencing and so on so uh, if you look at let's say mis guy he he will talk in terms of let's say data data processing parallel processing uh, ram rom and all those things right so each one will have different terminologies and now they have to come to a common language to successfully complete the project so interdependencies are there in project team members and those interdependencies should lead to productive output right otherwise there is there is a possibility that they may fight with each other right so there has to be a common language right so productive interdependency cohesiveness should be there of course uh, dig, uh, cohesiveness is nothing but degree of mutual attraction that team members hold for each other and their task so this cohesiveness comes little later in the project it's not uh, that on the very first day you will have cohesiveness amongst team, mem team members so in fact uh, it will take some time and uh, if there is a project let's say there it has got uh, 10 team members so there would be cohesiveness uh, between uh, different groups in even in 10 members so there would be two persons going uh, in a, in a group then again three person going in a group then remaining five persons in another group so in in this way there would be cohesiveness right trust should be there amongst each other as far as team members are concerned and this is very important because uh, because trust if it is there amongst team members they can successfully deliver project and trust is something which you know doesn't come uh, in in short span of time right and they will have to test each other right they means the, the, the team members will have to Uh, know each other then only there would be trust amongst themselves so it is the it is the uh, team's comfort level with each individual member uh, then only there would be trust now how to build trust in a project it it is the responsibility of project manager that he should ensure that uh, there is a trust amongst team members so he can take uh, the the project manager can take some of the steps to build trust amongst team members so let's say if there is a meeting going on uh, amongst uh, of a te of, of a team and the project manager may say to the team members that whatever we are discussing in this meeting uh, this will remain here itself we will not disclose to others or whatever views expressed by team members 
will, will not be expressed to outside to outsider right so this is how he can build trust and as i said trust uh, it doesn't come in one day right it takes time it's a long process and whenever there is uh, you see what happens in a team member either there would be trust or there would not be trust so it it's it is it is a kind of binary situation so either you trust a person or you don't trust a person you you can't have a situation that i trust this person 70% i trust this person 30% and so on right so it is most of the times it is 1 and 0 right so trust occurs at different levels trust occurs at professional levels so if i have said something to my team member and if he is delivering that if he is listening that it is quite a professional trust right then trust at integrity level of course integrity is very much needed um, so the, the, these things you know the integrity level deals with the the issues related to ethics corruption and so on right so integrity of 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 team member should be there towards project and at emotional level right so trust occurs at three levels right enthusiasm of course it is very much needed if team members are not enthusiastic they will not perform right so it's the it's basically the energy of the team members and spirit of the team members uh, that will drive project towards its success and uh, project should be of course challenging personally rewarding and supportive also right so very much needed enthusiasm for successful completion of the project and of course the uh, another characteristics is results orientation so the team member should be result oriented as i said first of all the team member should know what are the objectives of the project then only they will achieve those objectives right so commitment is needed now there are several reasons why teams fail or why projects fail again you can classify them into internal and external reasons right so the first thing is poorly developed or unclear goals what happens whenever you form a project team initially you don't have clear objectives of the project uh, you means being a project leader you know what are the objectives but your team members really don't know what are the objectives and in the beginning uh, whenever you you being a team leader uh, ask something to your team members they will have multiple interpretation of that instruction which you have given them because because there is no understanding amongst team members uh, they have joined um, very recently to your team they don't know each other and because of this whenever you give some instruction it will have multiple interpretation and those interpretation uh, every member will have its own interpretation he will interpret in it, in his in his benefit right so it is good to have faith in each other it is good to have trust in each other and when you have all these things then you can successfully deliver a project initially when you start a project you will have more conflicts because members are not aware about project objectives members really don't know uh, what are their roles what are their responsibilities what is reporting structure what is span of control and so on right so poorly developed or unclear goals is one of the reasons for failure of teams right so poorly defined project team roles and in, roles and interdependency 
lack of project team motivation if team is not motivated enough then they will not work right and poor communication this is very important it is the responsibility of project leader to communicate objectives policies instructions to all the team members and he should also listen to the feedback which is coming to him from bottom right so so it is basically top to bottom and bottom up approach right so this if if communication is happening in these two ways then project would not fail our project team would not fail poor leadership of course uh, this is another reason if leader him himself doesn't know what is to be done then what followers will do right so leadership has to be strong probably the uh, the leader the leader should come up with uh, decisions based on consensus right he should not be an autocratic leader so consensus is is the best method of leadership but again it depends on situation right because uh, in project you will have time constraints you have got uh, budget constraint and, and you have got pressure from different stakeholders so so many times you will have to go for autocratic style of leadership i am not saying that you should always go for autocratic style of leadership but largely it, it depends on um, what kind of situation you are working in right but consensus would be the best policy right so turnover turnover among project team members is one of the reasons for team failures dysfunctional behavior descriptive acts of some team members due to personality issues of course as i said in a team you will have different personalities so there would always be personality clash every member thinks that this project leader is uh, doesn't deserve to be a leader right or he doesn't deserve to be a team 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 manager or project manager right so and this thing you would have seen in in your projects as well right most of your team members would have said that this project team leader is uh, it doesn't deserve to be a team leader right and due to some or the other reasons right so many times you will have hidden agendas of team members or interpersonal problems amongst team members so these are some of the reasons for team failures now let us move on to this slide uh, stages in group development Uh, as i said uh, uh, there should be trust among amongst team members there should be faith amongst each other and these two things don't come in one one day right it takes time so similarly group development also takes time so it goes through different stages so the first stage is forming so initially what happens the members become acquainted with with atmosphere with 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 the organization uh, and initially they don't know what are the uh, goals of the project they know but they they don't know exactly what are the goals so they are unsure uh, unsure about project goals and uh, they, they are confused about the assignments on which they are working in absence of clear cut instructions right so this is a stage which is known as forming right so team the the team is in forming or groups are in forming stage after some time there would be storming people will complain with each other that this is not happening that is not not happening i don't have this resource why you have taken my resource and so on so there would be storm in the team because slowly and slowly they are in a position of understanding their roles and responsibilities right so uh, this is a case where uh, leadership 
uh, reporting relationship is 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 in the process right it's not clear norms of works are also not clear so everyone in the team will try to challenge what others are doing or what he is doing he will say this is not my job this is his job and so on right so after forming the next step is storming right there would be storm in the team right after some time things would start settling down so it's called no norming right so after some time the people would reach to certain you know agreements there they would be open with each others right they will start uh, you know believing each other and they will move towards trusting each others right so this is known as norming right so once this stage is cleared the next stage comes as performing since things are now settled roles and responsibilities are clear instructions are clear faith is starting building amongst proje project team members and then they they would perform and they will try to achieve objectives of the project right so once they start performing they achieve their objectives and objectives of the more importantly the objectives of the goal once objectives are achieved the final stage is adjourning right so you will disband the team all the team members will go to their respective functional departments are if you have hired uh, an expert a resource person from outside he will also go to his parent organization right so these are different stages forming storming norming performing and adjourning right so these things generally happen in a group development process right nowadays Uh, there uh, there are several virtual project teams uh, project team members don't sit at one physical location you will have team members working at several locations not only within a country but across countries so there are more and more project virtual project teams working these days so how virtual teams can be improved how performance of virtual teams can be improved so there are couple of points which you should look at first of all use face to face communication whenever possible right uh, either through skype or through video conferencing or through any other medium right so try to have face to face communication rather than having just uh, audio communication right it's good to have uh, visual uh, communication right don't let team members disappear let's say if there is a, a conference going on uh, amongst team members so all the team members should be there uh, you should not allow one or two team members to disappear right whether it's due to technical reason or some other reasons right establish a code of conduct of course there has to be code of conduct uh, whenever you work in a team uh, try try to have uh, you know the things related to project only right there should not be any personal comments right uh, there should not be uh, uh, they should not use use harsh language against their team members right so these are couple of code of conducts which they should follow right keep everyone in communication loop if there are five members in a team then all team members should be informed and updated about the decisions which which have been taken right if due to some reason if one member was not there let's say in previous meeting then he should be updated about the decisions of the meeting right create a process for addressing conflict and this is very important point conflicts conflicts will be there 
whenever you have a project team because because of several reasons right so we'll see conflicts in 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 detail right conflict management let's look at this point very important point conflict management most of the times managers spent their time in managing conflicts either within team or across stakeholders so this is very important topic conflict management and there are multiple reasons of having conflicts in a team or in a project so conflict is a process that begins when you perceive that someone has frustrated or is about to frustrate a major concern for a major concern of yours so conflict is is not a stage it is a process and it happens when you when you perceive that there is a conflict between between two two team members right so so conflict first of all you need to understand that there is a conflict right and then try to sort it out so you have got different categories or types of conflict and i have i have not seen any organization where there is no conflict conflicts will always be there however you should try to minimize conflicts but you will have most of the times conflicts in a project right so let us look at couple of categories of conflict so you have got goal oriented conflict so goal oriented conflicts means uh, they they result from multiple perceptions there would be disagreement amongst stakeholders of the project about end results about scope of the project about performance priorities and specifications so whenever you come you 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 prepare a project for a client there is a possibility that client may ask for increasing scope of the project or he may say that whatever project you have delivered to me it's not performing well so these are the conflicts which are uh, which which come under this category goal oriented conflicts right conflicts may arise due to administrative reasons now this this could be due to let's say uh, unclear roles and responsibilities and there is and they, it may be due to hierarchy of the structure in the organization as uh, we were discussing uh, uh, when when we, when we were discussing about types of organization we discussed uh, project type organization and functional type organization right and matrix type of organization which is which is a combination of project type and and functional type right so if you look at matrix type of organization you will have two bosses right so this is this will create administrative conflict right or the reason for conflicts arising out of such situations would be termed as conflict created by administration right then you can always have interpersonal reasons for conflicts right so different difference in work ethics of different stakeholders behavioral styles egos most important there would be every team member will have his or her own ego and that will create conflicts and there are some other issues like personality issues you you can have uh, issues related related to attitudes aptitude knowledge uh, their their uh, background and so on right so these are different categories of conflict now when we have different categories of conflict uh so before going for next topic let me summarize what we have done 
uh, today. Okay, let us move on to next topic. Let us look at different views of uh, conflict management, right? So, traditionally, uh, there there are different views, traditional view and you know the the modern view and so on, right? So, traditional view of conflict uh, focuses on that uh, conflicts negatively affect your organization and conflicts are bad for the organization. So, this particular view or the, the people who support this particular view think that conflicts are, are bad for the organization and they should be avoided and they, they, they do not want conflicts to happen at the first place, but even if they happens, even if they happen then uh, they, they are bad, right. So, they should be avoided, they should be suppressed and eliminated. This is traditional view. The behavioral view of conflict is that conflicts are quite natural and inevitable part of organization life. So, you cannot have a situation where you will not have any conflicts, so they are quite natural. So, you will always have conflicts and you will have to manage it, right. So, there is no way out, you cannot wish away conflicts because they are natural. So, manage conflicts effectively rather than suppressing them, right. A better or, or I, I would say a, a modern view of conflict. The third one is interactionist. Now, this is the view which encourages conflicts to develop in the organization. It prevents organizations to become too stagnant and apathetic. So, conflicts actually introduces an element of tension that produce innovation, creativity and higher productivity. Now, this view is, is totally different. So, according to this view, let there be conflict. So, when whenever you will have conflicts, you will have clarity of roles and responsibilities. You will have more and more creative ideas coming from team members and in this way, the productivity of the team will increase, right. So, let me summarize what we have done so far. We have seen today what is team building, uh, what are different types of uh, conflict, conflicts, we have seen what are different stages of uh, group development. So, we have got uh, let us say the first one is, yeah, we, we have got forming, storming, norming, performing and adjoining, right. So, you should uh, look at all these things and try to minimize conflicts in your project. So, with this let me stop here, thank you very much.